This Week and Each Week is brought to you by Game Toppers. Upgrade your gaming experience. Welcome to Game All Night. Welcome to yet another Game All Night. Tonight, I am going to be joined by Mr. Connor Magui of Inside Up Games, and this is going to be, I, I imagine... I, uh, I have every confidence. Every confidence. And what, what form of liquid confidence do we have that, is, that makes that you is, feel that, that always, way? Always adds to the confidence <laughs> that there will be fun. So, uh, so you and I are sharing a beer tonight. We got a, uh, a bomber of... Omegong's latest entry in their, well, I don't know if it's the latest entry, uh, a recent entry in Omegong's Game of Thrones uh, hmm. collaboration series. Okay. So this one is Queen of the Seven Kingdoms. I don't know how many of these you've had, but each one um, they base on some character uh, within the show. This one's sort of tr attributed to uh, Cersei Lannister. So they've uh, they've tried to do something that has a little bite to it. So they've mixed a uh, like a traditional... Belgian blonde ale with okay. a sort of tart Belgian sour to create something that's both alluring, but uh, but it'll get you a little bit there. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna try and murder me in my sleep. I well, think you know, it. you know, <laughs> it's not it's not causing any kind of ancestral thoughts or anything. So that's a <laughs> that's a positive, but. <laughs> You know, I have to work on that for the next uh, I, next entry in the series. Yeah, no, I don't think they do. I do <laughs> not think they do. So, so we have Connor. Connor actually, uh, he actually left briefly to grab something to drink. So I got to find out what it was. So, so welcome to the show, Connor. And uh, so, what did you run off set that you could grab and drink with us this evening? Well, I I need to drink slow because I drink a little bit too fast. Warm up here, so just a little bit of the old uh, Irish whiskey to keep things uh, nice and smooth. All right, I, I'll take some good old Irish. What kind? Do you have anything specific or? Uh, actually, I ran out of my good stuff. I really like the Red Breast, uh, which Ooh. is fantastic. Um, now, and then my Jameson. Uh, so now I'm down to the Tullamore Dew, unfortunately. Oh wow, still not bad. Yeah. Have you ever, do you like any of the single pot Irish whiskeys or do you go more for like kind of the, the blends like that style? Uh, to, to be totally honest, I actually started with scotches. So okay. I, was, I was into scotches for a while and I've just made the transition to Irish whiskeys um, because of the less peaty flavor. Um, right. So I got into these ones actually mostly because of drinking with other people who enjoyed Irish whiskeys who got me onto these ones. So which single uh, pot ones would you be talking about? All right, so the the one the one that kind of works for me that I love, um, and I'm actually out of right now because it's a little pricey in my state. Uh, it's called the Green Spot. It's fabulous. Oh, I don't know it. Ah, uh, I think oh, you need wow. to try it. Um, they if have it's a red pricey spot. in your state. It's going to be pricier up here. Well, I mean, our it's, liquor prices are brutal. Oh, are they? Yeah, oh, they're way worse than you guys. Well, way Pennsylvania, worse. Pennsylvania kind of stinks as far as you know. We're where our state controls our liquor pricing. So it's really... Oh, oh same as this then. That's right. Okay. So it, it does get pricey. I mean, for me, it's about $60, $70 a bottle. So I mean, okay. it's not bad, but it's yeah. in... It's, it's a little I'm bit above that. I conversion. So 60 US, that's about 4 million Canadian. Okay. Yeah, so 4 right. million. It's not bad. So it's kind of like yen. So you're about on par with yen right now. <laughs> 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 It's like, hey, everybody, go to Canada real quick because everything's cheap, right? It's everything's not that. Everything's cheap. Yeah. Doesn't work that way. So, so whereabouts in Canada are you? Because, you know, to us, there's kind of the right side and the left side. So I don't think that we really <laughs> geographically understand the Great White North. We just know it's kind of kind of there. And Bob and Doug McKenzie talk about it every now and then. <laughs> that's really about all we know. Well, it's funny. I really like messing with Americans because I know that's a, a soft spot for them or a weakness <laughs> for them. So I do this, and I do this around the world as well. I'll, I'll say, do you know where Toronto is? Because most people know where Toronto and Vancouver are. So I said, do you know right. where Toronto is? And they'll say, yes. I say, okay, fly to Toronto and then get in a car and drive 18 hours north. And that's where I am. <laughs> and everyone goes, what? And it's really just messing with them because we're on, we're, we have to get around Lake Superior. So we're actually just about uh, four hours north of Duluth or about seven hours north of Minneapolis. So kind of smack in the middle almost. 
Uh, yeah, middle to a little to the east. Okay. So, yeah. right, which is why I guess, you know, finding you at Origins, finding you at Gen Con is not unheard of because that's probably not too that's far right. of a run for you, right? Those are nice. Yeah, so I'll actually drive to both of those. So it's nice, okay. it's a nice short trip for me, something about 15 hours. So I'll hop in the car and get that done, um, which, is, which is really, really nice. Uh, PAX was a little bit far. PAX Unplugged was going to be a 24-hour drive for me. Ooh. And if I can't at least convince myself that there's a chance I'm sleeping within that 24-hour day, that, uh, that doesn't make sense. No. Now, and the um, and the other thing is, I mean, at least like you know, you release Gorus Maximus, so like it's small and it travels light, so that kind of yeah. helps a lot, right? Take a small oh, card game. No. That's that's the trick, people. That's that's the yeah. trick to travel. Well, not the mistake I made with my first game, six <laughs> pounds of Summit. That was a, <laughs> that was brutal everywhere it went. Right, and then you you don't make that mistake too many times. No, exactly. It's also that on to, to tangent on you. It's actually interesting too because Summit was the first, obviously, and last game I designed purely from a game design standpoint. Okay. I didn't design it from a publishing company standpoint. I didn't go into right. it saying like, "Oh, this is the best maximize things." I made it from like, "Okay, how can I make the best game with the best quality with the best stuff in it?" Um, and a lot of that stuff bites you in the butt. Come uh, <laughs> transportation, freighting, shipping, all that sort of stuff. Uh, so you just have to make that mistake once because then every game from then it's like, okay, well, I, I could make this using X amount of different things, but instead I'm going to, you know, m double up on this so I can use the same punching process or machine molds or whatever it's going to be to save a little bit of money somewhere. Right. Now, how did you kind of, so you kind of developed the summit kind of in a vacuum almost like inside up wasn't really a thing yet. So yeah, what was that experience about that? You know, you trying to come up with this idea and then kind of bringing this out into the world. I mean, what was that like for I'll, a first time? I'll try to give you the fast version because you don't have like seven hours. And you don't want to cut down that much of my <laughs> rambling. Um, but the fast version of the story is that I grew up without a team. So I have three siblings and we played a lot of card and board games as kids. Okay. Um, then I moved away. I actually worked in film for years. Uh, I made some decent coins. So I got into video games and nice sound systems and all that sort of stuff. Um, and through that, I actually met a, a guy who got me back into board games, um, which was nice. And then my wife and I started playing board games together. We kind of got back into the hobby. Uh, and then my wife and I ended up having kids. And a lot of the video games I used to play didn't uh -huh. interest me anymore because I didn't want my kids to see you know, me shooting people in the head for 45 minutes. Um, so I kind of got away from that. And at the same time, I had actually started a construction company. Um, <laughs> but uh, the crazy part was, is that uh, I was project managing it. So while I was worrying about problem solving for work, I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. So what I would do is I would take board game ideas and just kind of mull them over till I would fall asleep, basically as a way of keeping my brain busy doing something else. Um, gotcha. And I kind of got the ba the basic ideas down for the game, uh, mostly actually on Christmas Eve while waiting for my kids to fall asleep. So I, I kind of wrote them all down and I didn't think anything much more of it. But unbeknownst to me, I had an internal blood leak uh, that I didn't know about and that wouldn't be found for uh, almost a year later. So throughout that time, I slowly bled out, got really, really thin, really, really pale and couldn't work anymore. Um, because I was, I was hospitalized without trying to figure out what it was. So I took that time uh, where I couldn't be doing construction to, to then focus on the game again. And that's where I got the, the kind of the meat and, and potatoes of the game kind of put together. I started you know, playing with friends and testing it and figuring it out uh, and then got better. And now the issue was now I had a developed game, but I was back into the construction world. Uh, so I had a full-time job, plus I was doing gaming stuff, you know, every evening, like building it and reworking it and write, rewriting rules and all that sort of stuff. Um, and it got to a point where my lovely wife said, okay, like we need to decide what's going on because we are, at this point, we have three small, would that be four or three, four years ago? So we'd have a, kind of do this fast math, we'd have like a one, <laughs> three and five-year-old. Wow. Um, so my wife's like, we need to decide to decide what's going on because I can only, you know, multitask with so many things for so long. So uh, my brother-in-law pointed out uh, Kickstarter to me, which again is horrible to admit, but I did not know about Kickstarter prior really? to going on Kickstarter. Um, I just didn't have the time running my own business and I didn't have the disposable income. 
So uh, I got into Kickstarter and the first project I saw on Kickstarter was my brother-in-law showed me was Scythe by Jamie Stegmeier. And I was like, <laughs> that, yeah, that's wow, not like it's I'm, a high I'm bar at ready. all. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, yeah, wow. I you know I'm not ready for Kickstarter. Like that. <laughs> wow. Like this, that's a, that's impressive. Uh, but then luckily, and I backed it of course, but then uh, I spent more time kind of down that rabbit hole and right. backing more games and seeing more stuff and also seeing that like there was a lot of other people. Uh, then I kind of fell into Jamie Stegmeier's you know, Kickstarter lessons and his blogs and his book and just like devoured that stuff uh, and really kind of right. found my interest um, and went into that and then got the game going. And then with the help of and blessing of my wife, I was like, OK, well, the game works. People are enjoying it. Let's put it out there and see uh, you know, if it, if it interests the masses, because if it does, then I can give her. And if it doesn't, then I'll, I could just kind of stop and go back to focusing on uh, construction. Right. And luckily, luckily, it, yeah, it worked. It took off. So, so if you were to describe uh, Summit for somebody who had no idea what the game's about, um, how would you kind of capsulate it? Because it's 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 a it's kind of a a weird hybrid and mixture of things and mechanics going on. So, how would you describe it best? Because I just butcher so, it. <laughs> so and that's why. Just so the, and I could do this at conventions all the time. So people, I'll ask them if they want to peek over and have a look. And I'll say, uh, do, do a quick pitch. They're like, how fast? I'm like, well, I can give you a two-second pitch. It's a survival game that can be played competitively, cooperatively, or solo on a two-sided board. And then I pause. And I say, would you more? Because at that point, they have to like competitive games or cooperative games or solo games. So one of those things has to interest them. Right. And by calling it, and realistically, it is a survival game because players are characters. No players have died yet. But characters <laughs> die in the game all the time. Player elimination is very important in the game. Um, so I usually get, get them hooked in with that. And yeah, the, the basic idea of it is that uh, you'll be working either on your own or as a team to ascend and descend a very deadly mountain, uh, laying tiles to build new routes every time you play. There's difficulty settings from very easy to very hard. Uh, everyone has their own asymmetrical character map with their own stats and abilities, right. each responsible for carrying their own resources, uh, and they all affect each other. So the more food and oxygen you carry, the heavier you get, the heavier you get, the slower you move. So you have to balance all this resource management with a little bit of press your luck as well. And then there's a little bit of ran randomness factors from, you know, anyone who's ever gone out to nature and knows it's going to hit you out there. So there's the weather, dice, there's events, there's all that sort of stuff. Uh, basically, the, the game trying to mess with you as you're playing. Great. And, you know, as anybody who likes outdoor activities, it's always great to risk death with a die roll rather than in real life. So and that's what I tell you guys. It's the hardest mountain you'll ever climb while sitting in a chair. <laughs> so so there needs to be expansions. Are you thinking of maybe doing this with like scuba diving theme? I could get behind that. I think, you know, that's so funny. So did you is this like a preset? Are you just a genius? No. OK, this... so well done. First of all. So there was so uh, it's right over here. So summit. Is the, oh, I'm going to knock stuff off. It's going to come falling. Summit, the beast, is right. here. So that's the original. The six-pound beast. Ooh, the six-pound beast. Right. Um, the Yeti, as you can hear me putting it down, the Yeti expansion. Okay. For an adorable little Yeti who hunts you in the mountain. I'm actually Yetis just, have to be cute if they're going to eat you. <laughs> and they do. It's a roll. Uh, and I'm <laughs> just working on, actually just finalizing the next expansion, which is a team's expansion, which kind of brings in a semi-co-op feel to it. Um, which is working really, really well. And I'll probably be kickstarting that one very shortly, actually. Cool. But it's funny that you mentioned the diving thing because um, Summit's actually game one of a Karma trilogy. So Karma is the one thing I didn't really discuss in my little speech, but it's kind of my unique mechanic in the game. So it's, it's kind of a, a tracking system for a take that game. So within the okay. competitive version of Summit, you can play Karma cards to actively uh, help or hurt each other. These are actually just... Um, homemade print off ones for the next for the expansion but uh -huh. basically so yeah you'll, you'll see you know the good and evil the halo and the pitchfork so uh -huh. you'll be playing these cards and they will either be helping or hurting uh, your friends or, or your, your your rivals i guess uh but the nicer or meaner you are your karma will change so if i'm being a sweetheart and i know here chris i'm going to give you some food and auction i might gain some karma Meanwhile, okay. dan's got a ton of karma so he cuts my rope and throws me back down the hill it's but he's gonna such lose a dan karma. move <laughs> for sure, Dan. <laughs> uh, so basically what that does is it, it, it ranks it. So it's not just a race, but at the end of the game, you're going to add up your race points and your karma points to see okay. who wins. So it, it's kind of that mechanic, which I think works really well. And people seem to really love. Awesome. So that mechanic and a few other small ones will, will carry you through this trilogy. And you totally touched on the, uh, the second game in the trilogy, which is called Plunge. And it's a scuba diving game. So it's going to be a set collection. 
uh, game underwater, uh, diving in old wrecks, and again, with some uh, com cooperative and competitive and solo gaming. Uh, but everything else is going to change. So obviously, you're not a mountain. There's, there's not going to be right. tile laying. We're gonna, I'm re I've redone the player mats, so they, they're similar enough that anyone who's learned them will understand how they work, but how they're used is a little bit differently, and the stuff that's tracked on them is different. So just enough that people can understand it, but enough of a change to keep it exciting and interesting. I like where this is headed. Just as long as I'm not just, you know, doing the basic, like, oh, look, there's fish, here's three, you know. You know oh, I want to I wanna, I wanna no, see some, only, like... The only fish game is trying to eat you. All right, I'm with you. Yeah, there's... Yeah, there is literally predators coming after you, or you're sending them after your friends. I like that. Um, yeah, nothing cute and fuzzy. Don't worry. Right, I don't have to outswim the shark. I just have to outswim you. <laughs> that's, exactly. That's kind exactly. of my theory. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. I mean, I didn't mean to go down that rabbit hole, but I'm well done. I'm happy to go down it. That that's right yeah. up my my hurdle. Which is alley. funny too, because there's been uh, I'd already started des uh, designing it. Well, a couple of years ago now, like right after summit. So, but there's been a fair number of scuba diving themed games coming out, which is right. obviously really worrisome from my point of view, right? Oh, what, is it oh then you play them and you realize, thing? don't be worried. Exactly, right? You're like, <laughs> oh, okay, this is completely different, or this one's not something I would actually want to play, or whatever. Yeah, I, I, because, because I'm that guy, because it, I, I like my theme. I want to play the game of the thing I love, and nobody's. You know, nobody's really done it yet. I'm, I haven't been really thrilled with any of the ones that not, have come out. Not well, I don't think. That's no. and I'm I'm huge for theme. Like theme is so important to me. Um, it's yeah, it's yeah. I I love theme. I want to be immersed. I want to be involved in the story. I want you know something something to happen. That's right. That's what I say about Summit. To jump back to it is that's one of my favorite things. Is even it's been three years of showing this game and teaching this game. And it's been out for a year and a half now or whatever. Um, right. but it's great because I still have random people or people I know or friends constantly telling me stories about what had happened to them on the mountain. And they're usually funny because usually people are dying in the best ways possible, but they're not mad about it because it's created an epic story that they didn't remember. And for, for example, to, to go back to Jamie Stegmeyer, <laughs> I was at, um, Oh, how am I blanking on it? Um, sh shucks. I was at shut up and sit down out in Vancouver last year for their, uh, for their convention. Right. And meanwhile, Jamie Stegmeyer is playing uh, Summit with his friends. And they play the cooperative side. And he steps out of camp. And the first thing he does is eat his Sherpa. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it, it's that it's that game designer thing. You got to push all the levers, twist all the knobs. You got, hey, can I, can I do this? You know. I was like, wow, okay, all right. You know, you're already full on resources. But I guess as a sacrifice, you were willing to make. Yeah, and... Um... <laughs> Wow, I've never seen the karma go backwards so fast. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, wow. that was great. Well, you know, one less mouth to feed and all that. So Exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's all dangerous up there anyways. Wow, wow. Oh man. I don't I don't think they give you a flag if you eat your Sherpa, you know, the, the Himalayan. <laughs> so it's interesting because yeah, exactly. um I actually know a guy who climbed Everest. Um he's actually he was part of uh the I do ski patrolling and there's this group that teaches avalanche safety and he did that. So he has the Tibetan flags that when he teaches class, he puts all around the room. It's kind of, it's pretty impressive to think, you know, that. And actually you, you have found all the right rabbit holes to go down because yeah? I actually have, I have two friends that are Everest summiters. It's crazy, uh, and one of them right? is a local guy who summited. It's amazing. He summited multiple times. So actually when I was a, quite a way through summit and having come up with a lot of the cards and the events and all that sort of stuff as I would meet with him quite a bit just to make sure that although I joked about it, it the sure. eating of the Sherpa isn't quite as overt in the game. It's, it's <laughs> suggested it's not, it's not that harsh. Um, but I actually did want to make sure that I was still being polite and respectful because as he'll tell you, it's not just their uh, last name, it's their language, it's their culture. It's right. It's, 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 it's everything. It's their religion. It's everything that they are. Uh, built into it so i just making sure that i wasn't being disrespectful to them at any point that's awesome and you know uh, it's like and, you're sensitive of the cultural appropriation potential at that early of a moment which is well I mean, yeah and it's i mean we're in a very politically yeah. correct society right now as much as i like to laugh at everything all the time um people's feelings get hurt so you, have to, you do have to be careful uh, and he was really good for that but he was also things too like pointing out uh even little jargon things where i'd you know i'd written down 
um, right. a term that I had found Googling online. And he's like, oh, nobody actually calls it that. We call it this. Um, and actually with this expansion, I finally got in one of the terms that he really wanted me to use, <laughs> which is the, give me the screaming barfies. Nice. So <laughs> when you've exercised your muscles so hard that you've been hanging for so long that they just, you, you're, you were screaming in pain and wanting to throw up at the same time. Wow. No. <laughs> I, yeah, and, and voluntarily done, I, I'm i amazed. It's just, um, I actually, we saw like one of my companies brought in one of the gentlemen who was featured, and I'm, I'm going to have to pop up his name, but he was one of the guys from that movie Everest, the one that they left behind. Oh. The one that actually got left behind, he does touring and he does like um, motivational speaking and things like that. And man, the the story is just outright amazing. Like left There's for a bunch. dead. Yeah. There's um. It's, when, it's actually, insane. again, when I was working when I was working on Summit, there was a there's a Netflix or sorry, it wasn't a Netflix original, but it's a movie shown on Netflix right. called The Summit. The Summit, I think. Okay. Um, and if you haven't watched it yet, you can watch it, and you can see where a couple uh, card uh, event cards that I've written came out of that movie because you're watching it. And it's uh, as you're watching, like, holy, did I just see what I think I just saw? And like, just crazy stuff that, as you say, people are willingly doing. Like, they're they're putting themselves out there because that's what they want to do. That's how they get their enjoyment. And it's it's crazy. Yeah, it's. um, I mean, and it's yeah, just absolutely amazing the the physicality required for something like that. And the man who did it, who I know, is not. He's not like huge. He's not big. He's just yeah. r- wicked smart when it comes to all things outdoors and just kind of yeah. – he's that guy who's just quietly observing everything and knows right where to be, when to be there. That's what sounds like, like my friend. He's a very yeah. similar body type to me. Like you wouldn't think there's anything nope. crazy going on. They're just like lean, well-fed, well-exercised, and very intelligent. It's 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 amazing. Well, I think this, that's an awesome place to take a break because I, I do have to question you on a couple things related to what you just said there. So we're going to take a quick break from our pontification sponsor after this. <laughs> Pontifications with Patrick Hillier. Locating a missing stiletto was the key to solving a heinous crime. The prime suspect had a closet dedicated exclusively to footwear. Finally, the broody detective in charge found a pair of shoes that matched the bloody footprints in the parlor. But only after a great deal of soul searching. And welcome back. I am still here with Mr. Connor McGooey of Inside Up Games. So, so Connor, I, I enjoyed our first half, but th- but there's something I have to call into question. Um, you you talked about video games and not wanting your kids to play these, and and the wholesomeness that is board gaming. And then <laughs> there's Gorus Maximus, which you know even. Oh, okay. Whew. <laughs> I thought you had something bad. That's easy. No, okay, that's I'm right. Glad you, I can't, but man, I, you have you are like uh, some sort of bloodhound who have all the right rabbit holes to go down. <laughs> well played, sir. So I have. I know my job my so shoulder. well. Yeah, well done. So yeah, so there's Goris Maximus. Right. I mean, I'm imagine you guys got throwing up. Gorgeous Quanche artwork. Is, I might add. Oh, he's a, he's amazing. And uh, so first of all, I love it, and I would never change it. I'm not going to censor it because it's so it's so good. But the thing that drives me a little bit crazy, and in a funny way as well, is that I get questioned about it a lot. It's like, oh, it's so graphic, it's so violent, and it's like, yeah, okay, it is. Like, I mean, that man's where am I going? I kind, I kind of like the bear that's like running around with the leg in its mouth. That's kind of the arm in his mouth. (laughs) The arm in the mouth. Fantastic. Yeah, Yeah, it's so good. And it's funny (laughs) because, and I'll and I'll get that quite a bit. I get a lot of people saying, you know, it's. I really like the game, but you know I'm, I can't play with my kids. And I mean, you could see, oh, here if I go to the back of this one, there, I can find your bear. There's your bear in the middle there. Oh yeah, right. Big old and red bear. Like, yeah, I love it's, them. 
It's all covered. It's it's goofiness covered. Like, there's an ostrich eating a brain up here. Right? <laughs> right? Well, we eat their right. eggs. It's only fair. I mean, <laughs> exactly. Come on. <laughs> the, the funniest part to me is that, as I mentioned, my kids can play this game. They're five, seven, and nine, and it doesn't offend any of them. And they don't watch television. They're not desensitized because of movies. Like they're, it's they can just understand that it's a cartoon game. And right. they could pretend it's a ketchup fight if they want. So the one thing I'm asked a lot is I is mentioned about, you know, because of the violence and, you know, we're just really worried about, you know, offending somebody. And I just really, really want to finally <laughs> hear from someone who's actually offended, someone who's actually hurt by this, right? Who's like, oh, this is unacceptable. Yeah, yeah it's cartoon violence. We used to watch Wile E. Coyote get an anvil landed on him from the road right. runner, like. It's, whoop, so it's the blood or the blood is the too much. So as you can tell, that part for me, I find very funny. But again, <laughs> I want to change it because it, it, it works great. And it works for the theme. It works for the story. It works for the game. Ah. Excellent. So I, I kind of think that that's, that's an important you know, distinction because it is. It's just artwork. And I love yeah. Quan Chai's style. And it it's amazing. If, if for no other reason, I love the, the cards and... Don't even get me started on the quality of them, the plasticity, the yada, oh. yada, yada. Yeah, it's fantastic. And it's actually, again, to mention something funny is that when I was having my uh, ambassadors um, play test it for me around the world, there right. is a bull. Oh, I'm looking at myself backwards. There's a bull there right. covered in human viscera. And, nice. um, and they well mentioned in Spain, like, oh, did, right? Yes. Well, that's what they say. <laughs> they said, just to let you know, bullfighting is a very serious topic right now in europe and people are get really really offended when they see the violence of the bulls and i'll and so i paused and i was talking to the person i said so they're not concerned about all the people getting paid? <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna get on your high horse about the bull you're not worried about there's a girl here with nothing on her ha- but her hands like how right. are you worried about the bull who's like but people will get their underwear in a twist about anything these days so, so quick spoiler, tune in next week because Connor has offered up a copy or two of Gorus Maximus for the giveaway that we'll be doing during the game show. So we definitely got to make sure you catch in on that because it's, it's amazing. And how well did that thing do on Kickstarter? It, so, so it went well. So Summit, my first game, was a 30-day campaign, and it took 29 days to fund. Well, uh, not, no, stress my, no stress there. No stress. <laughs> Vault of Salt was my second game, and it took uh, 29 of 30 days to fund. Uh, Gorus Maximus was my third game, and it took uh, just under 12 hours to fund. And then we were aiming for, I can't remember what the final numbers are now, but we were aiming for 14,000. And I think with the, the Kickstarter closed, there were 55 or 60 or something like that. Um, but this is what you were hinting at before. So those I mean, the, look at the, the gold edge. It's gorgeous. Right. Those are the gold, and those are the plastic cards. So they're just fantastic. A little sword in there somewhere. Oh, there I is. love the sword. So I, I love all the people who kind of complained about. Well, there's a paper clip. I'm like, uh, that's what the sword's for. Uh, hello. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Tom Vassell's like, we just threw the paper clip out. And I'm like, uh, there's a sword in there. Uh, sword's better. <laughs> I'm like, come on, use the sword. Sword's great. Sword's great. Absolutely. I guess, although, to be fair, and I have to think right, is that you're a genius and you have the premium version. And the premium version has the gold and the sword, but the retail version doesn't. So ah, the chance, okay. I may, have, I may have given the Dice Tower just the retail version. Ha <laughs> ha. I mean, um, yeah. Well. <laughs> no. hey, well, here's the other cool thing. I mean, come on. You guys know that I'm not all about talking about the games, but there are some really cool things here. Like, I, I love some of the mechanics in Summit. I, I like what Gorse... I did not I did not back that. I bought that on the secondary market, and I paid much more than I should have for it because I wanted the, I wanted the full version, okay, because I thought it was great. But what's awesome about it is, is how many trick-taking games play eight people? And one, one to eight, one to right? Which is the eight. craziest thing. One to eight players. And the other thing is, is, and this is as the designer, my recommendation is, once you get over four or six players, right. I highly recommend a team game, just because they're more fun. There's more strategy. You're working together. The gameplay works smoother. It can get very hectic at eight players, as most eight-player games can be. Um, but it really works really well, one to eight. And when I originally did the game, I actually only designed it as a two to eight-player game. 
And it wasn't until during, either during or right before the Kickstarter, I think maybe even during the Kickstarter, one of the guys who was uh, playing it and testing it, uh, who loved it, Timothy Gay, uh, reached out to me and he gave me a suggestion for a one-player variant because right. I'd come up with two others that I didn't like um, because they're based off of things like bridge mechanics. But in bridge, there's a set rank and set suit and set values, and things don't change. So right. it's an easier rule set to build off of. Whereas in Gorse, as you know, you have the ability to change Trump mint suit. Cards have different values, whether you want to take good cards or bad cards. If I was good at my job, I'd be showing you as I was saying this, right? That, so whereas, you that know, this damn thief, eight. I hate that eight. <laughs> yeah, the eight minus four, right? The thief is that. The ostrich is two positive points and a little gold right. coin there. So having all those things manipulating and changing throughout the game is what makes it a little more difficult. So Timothy came up with an idea on how to make a one-player game. So I played it over and over and over. I probably played it a couple dozen times because it's fast one player. Uh, but I won 100% of the time. And because I'm a theme guy, in my brain, if I watched a competitor in an arena and they right. won every fight, eventually I'd say, eh, this is probably rigged. Nobody right. should win all the time. So that's what I said in the solo rules. I said, if you win every fight cleanly, then you actually lose. What you need to do is you need to win one of the eight, which, as you mentioned, is the minus four victory points. You need to right. still take one of those and win to win you the need to throw game. a match. And that small tweak. You need to throw a match. You need to, but not lose the match. You still need to win the match while taking the bad points. And that's what makes it hard. Because instead of just throwing off bad cards or trumping at the right time and just having everything laid out very obvious to you, now you need to hold things and, and save some high cards just in case this, the deck messes you over. So that, that little bit of a tweak works really, really well. And a lot of the solo gamers have been getting back to me and they're really enjoying them, which is great. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. So... So last week we had we had Alan Girding in in the studio and we are kind of in preparation of our anniversary episode coming probably two two shows from now because you know it, it's going to be a lot of work I got to get started now when when you get done and Dan looks over and says good luck editing that one um, that kind of <laughs> tells you what what I'm in for um, but you and him I think share a a kind of interesting distinction between you. Do you have any Which idea is? what it is? No. No? Yeah, and he told it he told me right at the end of the show last time and I kind of found it interesting and I I think the same thing applies to you. And if it doesn't I'll just cut this out because I'm lame. Um <laughs> <laughs> or put it in post. Um but he <laughs> lost both his front teeth. What how do you what the heck? You are good. <laughs> I don't know who is like research team works for you. That is really impressive. Hey, it's all that Patreon money wrote... at work. I'm just saying. Lots of bribes had to be made. How, How would you have? <laughs> That's well done, sir. That is very well done. Yeah. So uh, did you did you hear the story? You just knew that I did that. I I just know that it happened. And uh, I, th I think you kind of need to tell us. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> all right i don't want to waste too much time but yeah so <laughs> i love having fun obviously i love people i am a people person i could be around people all the time um yeah i love people people are great and i love having fun i love entertaining i love making people laugh i love laughing with them sure. so again rewind to me working when i was in my film career um so i would have been in my early 20s uh, and I was working, I can work in English and in French, and I was working in French for a reality show that was filming a uh, Voyager canoe trip going from Quebec City back to Winnipeg. Um, Very loose and original, of you. Yeah. Right, exactly. <laughs> and of course, lucky me, I was part of the crew. We lived in, and we stayed in hotels, we ate really well, we drove on the roads. Meanwhile, these guys are in real birch bark canoes with authentic clothing and you know, crap food and paddling <laughs> their butts off every day. Uh, so anyway, so they're doing this and we're at this one location in Mattawa in um, southern Ontario. So just kind of northeast of Toronto. Um, and we're filming there and uh, <laughs> me being the genius that I am, <laughs> half of the or three quarters of the crew is down by the beach uh, playing guitar and having a bonfire and just kind of chatting. And then so me and another buddy decided that since we've got all of our film gear, we're going to dress up all in black, like black balaclavas, black jackets black everything and we're going to see who can ninja crawl and get the closest to the people at the fire and see if you can like you know do the yeah and like pull them down right 
So we do this. We get all dressed up. We go down. I get within maybe two or three feet from someone before they see me. And luckily, I create such a distraction that my buddy Gab is able to actually pretend kill someone. So it was, it was a victory for us. But now, now I'm all decked out but in all black. It's nighttime, and we're on this lovely, let me see if I can do this, sloping hill. So it's like the water is down here, <laughs> and then you have the beach, and then a hill, and then a parking lot, and then more motel, and then another parking lot, blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, we should play high and go seek in the dark. This is a great place to <laughs> do it. Great. I'm ready for it. <laughs> so fast forward uh, to us playing high and go seek in the dark. And uh, this guy named Carl, who was the director of photography and just an absolute sweetheart, uh, was it. And he was ser- searching for everybody. And so now I've gone up the hill and I've gone across the parking lot and uh, I'm hiding in a garbage can. So I've taken the garbage bag out of the garbage <laughs> and I've crawled inside and I'm like Oscar the Grouching it. And like, the peeking out. The <laughs> and I'm in the garbage can and I could hear people getting back to home base. And home base is like literally across the dirt park down the grass hill. And there is like home base kind of off to the left of the, the main campfire. So I'm there and I'm hearing this guy get back and she gets back and he gets back and she gets back. And I'm like, oh, crap. I'm pretty sure I'm the last one. Like, I got to go. So I peek out and I can see Carl is kind of walking back and forth like prison guard with his flashlight <laughs> trying to find out where I am. So I wait until I think he's got to the, you know, the apex of his curve where he's the furthest point away from me possible. Take the lid off, get out of the garbage can. And I start to go across the gravel parking lot. But being gravel it makes like <laughs> noise. And Carl spins around with the flashlight, right? And I go into like full sprint mode, like Olympic, like, (laughs) like, boom, full speed. And I am gone like a bat out of hell. (laughs) But luckily, I am super intelligent. So as I'm running at full speed, going for this grassy hill, my brain is smart enough to be like, we need to do this properly. Like, if we're going to win, let's win properly. What's the fastest way to get down this hill? You're not going to run down the hill because you're going to trip yourself up. You're not going to slide down the hill stop. Right. So the best thing to do is going to be to roll down the hill for sure. Sure. And Trash can roll. Got to Gotta go. go. Yeah. Right. And what's the best way to go from a sprint to a roll? A tuck dive. Of course. Oh, yeah. So I go from like as fast as I can to full on like, boop, Superman. Boom. And I go flying down the hill so fast uh, that when I wish I had a little character here that when my face makes contact with the metal pole I didn't know was there. I literally go pink and I spin <laughs> 180 degrees around the pole and come up and go and my bottom lip hangs in half and this this main tooth part of this tooth and these teeth here oh, are just like crunched out of my mouth and everyone goes quiet. And the funny part is because we're a film crew, someone was actually filming the campfire. Oh, of course. And you can hear someone singing and playing guitar. And in the background, you hear <laughs> silence and a pause. Connor, you okay? <laughs> so, I, so I get up and I'm, and I'm right already like, then it's like super clear. Like, and I wasn't in, honest to God was not drinking. No alcohol was involved. So I get up and I clear as like, wow, that was dumb. That was dumb. And I'm just, just pouring blood. So my buddies come out, they, they get me up, they take me to the emergency room, which is in a tiny town. So there's not a doctor actually there. They have to call them to come to the, to the hospital. Once he gets there, my friends made a comment saying, oh, uh, as another director of photography, oh, I wish I would have brought my camera. I could have got some good shots. And the doctor says, oh, don't worry. I can wait. So he comes back to the hotel and he gets all of his high def gear and they have like 45 minutes of him doing like all the sutures and uh. cutting and cleaning. And yeah, so it ended up being great. And then the next uh, next day, so I'm all doped up. I get sent back. The next day I'm laying in, in bed at the hotel and the same buddy Gab comes in. You know, Connor, can I get you anything? I'm laying there all doped up. Uh, I just really want my tooth. So he goes back out and finds the blood trail down to the post and finds my chiclet in the grass brings it back to me so that when we go to the next town over where they actually had a dentist i gave it to the dentist and they glued it Ah. back on same tooth so so for those of you watching at home here's here's a little first aid tip if you put it back (laughs) in Within 20 minutes to half an hour, you're, you're okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, the root not, canal was painful as hell. But, but not the next day, um, and yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. I just, I, I need to know, were, were you at least thinking when you're you're in this tuck and you're in the roll and you're starting to go over, were you, were, was at least like 
as you wish. Was that at least like going through your head? (laughs) No, it's probably like, man, that was the coolest move anyone. (laughs) That's usually how those things end, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was great. And then the the worst part was when the dentist put it back in, she's like, okay, like it's not solid. Like it's glue. Like this, I couldn't afford to put a post in there. Right. So she was like, okay, like, but now you can't be like ripping sandwiches and apples and like no tearing motions. So I was like, okay. So I was careful for me the first month and then eventually kind of forgot about it. Went back to normal three days before I have decided to ask my uh, girlfriend to become my wife to, to engage. I'm working on set and I'm eating bacon. And that feeling you had as a kid when your tooth falls out, you never forget that feeling. Now the wiggle, so wiggle, wiggle. Chewing, yeah. And I went, Bleh. And bacon crumbs and a tooth was in my hand. And they're going. And like, I'm a smiley guy. Nothing like a giant hole yeah. makes you really self-conscious and not want to smile at anybody anymore. Those must be some great engagement photos. <laughs> it gets better. The dentist who was next to our production house, uh-huh. I walked into his office and explained it to the, to the uh, receptionist. She told the dentist, he fit me in that day and charged me nothing and said it was my wedding present. Wow. Not bad, eh? No. I mean, that's, so I, it's so nice. To be fair, I brought, I brought my wife back to thank him so he knew I wasn't just lying to him. <laughs> yeah, because that you make that up all the time, right? Like, yeah, exactly. look good. Wow. <laughs> okay, that was way more than I bargained for. I, I'm glad we went down that hole. <laughs> I can't believe I am. I was impressed by your set when I saw it. But I'm uh-huh. more blown out of the water by your research. No, oh, no. Well, maybe I'll clue you in out. when we're done. I'll, 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 yeah. I'll, 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 I'll show you who my minions are. That's yes. well done. Well done. Well done. Now I'm actually a little bit nervous about what else you've dug up. So, so <laughs> speaking of which, <laughs> speaking of which, you know the segues write themselves. I don't even really what, plan what's these that, things. Mom, sorry, <laughs> I've got to go. Right, right. So. So I think that one of the other things Connor is known for, and if you go to any convention, you'd be hard pressed not to see it live and in action. Is is he's a huge hugger, as as he just demonstrated. So yeah. so I thought it would be fun to play a little game that we are going to call wrestling move or hug. <laughs> You've got my undivided. Day after day, millions of yellow meeples sit unused and unwanted in their box. These defenseless pieces haven't been given the chance of other popular colors like blue or red, so here they sit, unplayed, day after day, week after week, year after year. Throughout time, yellow has been labeled with terms like lemon or pea, hurting the delicate sensibilities of these meeples who didn't choose to be yellow, but were made that way. Who will be the voice for the unplayed colors? Will you? For a small donation of just $10 a month, we at GAN Charities will ensure that yellow sees just as much attention, love, and joy as the populars. We will endeavor to make sure that every pawn, meeple, and piece have a chance to win or lose as equals with the other colors. Don't let our pawn prejudice go any longer. Be the voice for the less played, less wanted and less loved colors in all games. All right, so so Connor, we, 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 we're going to play this little game. Um, so I found these these terms online because that's where you find these things, right? And, and your job <laughs> is just to tell me, is this a, a professional wrestling move or is this a type of hug? All right. Nice. And, uh, and I, I think uh, I think we'll go from there. What do you think? <laughs> I think this is going to be great. All right. So I, I kind of think if you, if you call it like a wrestling move, I kind of think you might need to describe what you think it would look like. I think Let's that that it. might be an important piece to this. All okay. right. So so bear hug. Do you think it's a wrestling move or it's a it's an actual hug? It's an actual hug. Yeah. Well, it's both. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I didn't know both was an option. (laughs) 
but we're going to go for for the sake of this. It, it's a wrestling move. So I the mean, wrestling move fair, trumps. Is, that is a wrestling move. I have used the bear hug to take Rob Rouse down uh, three times. Yeah, I think he Boom. needs that though, right? You know, it's like, <laughs> Rob's not a small guy. I mean, he's getting smaller, no doubt. But he is. He's still he's getting the, smaller. He, 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 he throw him around like a little toothpick. Right. I need to see that at Origins, though. We'll we'll see what happens. Make sure Christina's there. She loves when I beat the crap out of Rob. <laughs> well, you know, I I think she does it too. That's the thing. Yeah, so, it's true. So so the long hold is that going to be a wrestling move or Ooh. a hug? See, now I'm worried that I I should have had a limit on how many boats I can guess because I actually enjoy the long hold as a hug. Okay. When I know it can make someone uncomfortable. Because if you, if you hold that hug for longer than someone wants to, it's super funny to me. Not always for them, but just, okay. yeah, because usually I got them in an embrace and just long enough for them to be like, to let go and then to kind of come back in like <laughs> unsure. And then you let go, so then they look weird. It's fantastic. So I'll say hug. All right. And of, of course, yes. I mean, it's definitely a good hug. For, for you, it might be the... Just too long hug, but you know, <laughs> exactly. absolutely. Oh, so the clover wrestling leaf move. Wrestling, wrestling move, Dan, Boom. is he correct? Yes, Man. absolutely. I love I the. Think uh, I may have even used that on Brandon Nile as well. Yeah. See, see this. I this I think is good. We used to do this to my friend's little brother when he was young. We used to make <laughs> him up and you know stuff <laughs> like that. So the cross body. Ooh, cross body. That's a tricky one. Well done. Crossbody. There's probably wrestling people who are hating me right now. It's so obvious. I well, you know, Chris Michelle would probably be the only one, I think. But. <laughs> Crossbody. I don't care if you have lean across. I, I, I'm going to go hug again. You're going to go with hug? I, right. think it's, I, think I think you're trying to trick me because it seems like it should be wrestling, so I'm going to go hug. To be Why, what, what motivation would I have to try and trick you with these? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, come on. Right. I need what? to point this out because I think this is hysterical. Like if you look, I guess it's on this side on, on my screen. But the woman who's like about to get this crossbody slam is like smiling. Oh, yeah. She's ready. <laughs> she is totally That's... like smiling and laughing. So I don't know exactly what's going on here, but I think it's hysterical because that woman is and she's... into it. And she's got to catch that woman, but but make it look like she got hurt at the same time. Right. Oh so, my god. That, very funny. The <laughs> London Bridge. <laughs> oh boy. I don't. I don't. Is anyone keeping track of my score? I'm going to put my score up on the screen later. And oh no. We, <laughs> maybe I'll do that in post if I'm feeling motivated. <laughs> but I'm just having fun. <laughs> the London Bridge. I'm trying to think of the actual form. Oh yeah, you're messing. You're like. I'll go, I'll go regular hug. Regular hug? It doesn't sound, it doesn't sound, yes. What right, is it so, though? So, so the London Bridge is that awkward hug where you kind of go in, but you keep your pelvises just a little <sighs> far apart. Yeah. You know, like there, there's a small child there or something, you know, and you just kind of, eh. I like that. It's kind of awkward. I didn't know it was the London Bridge though. Right. It's like, it's right up your alley. It's awkward. It's strange. And it makes people uncomfortable. I've actually... I don't want to name people, but I actually... You've know. already named three. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, people who would be offended. Everyone I name won't be offended. Uh, people who, ha who have gotten, like, the opposite of the London Bridge hugs from people. Right. The, like, pelvic forward hugs. Oh, yeah, so they're awkward. Their counter is the London Bridge. So they purposely London Bridge people who they know are coming a little hot. Okay. That's fair. That's fair. I like that. Molly go round. <laughs> Molly go round. Molly go round. Sounds like a wrestling move. I think it does too. Yeah. I know. Yeah, that was fun wow. right there. Their athletic prowess is impressive. Yeah, it's. I, I I learned a lot researching for this. Let's just say that <laughs> I am not a wrestler by any means, so I I had to learn something here. The octopus. I mean, now this could apply to either, I think, you know. I want to go, yeah, 
Yeah, that's well, not an answer. <laughs> I was because I was want to say when they, when you have all your arms around them, but if they have all their arms around you, then that is eight limbs. Is it like the koala so we used to stick to our mirrors, like they used yeah. to clip on? Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, I'm gonna say both. I'm gonna say octopus is both. All right. Well, I mean, it could be. Ooh. It's a wrestling move in this case, but. I mean, I'm sure we've all met that one guy. He's giving birth or something. I know, right? She is not happy. Wow. There's stuff uh, going on. What is her legs over her head? Wow, that's yeah. I'm gonna try that on a hug for somebody though, see if I can do that. <laughs> so if you find someone willing to let you do that to them, I hope you get that on film and you still have your teeth when you're done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. I wonder if I can get Vassal into that hold. I might be able to. But I just, so here's my question. Who's winning? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, that's, that's the hard part. I don't know. Because <laughs> she's like, she looks like she's in pain, but she's clearly got the other person's head locked in her leg. Right. <laughs> and arm twisted backwards. Yep. There's a where, lot going is, on there. There's yeah, a lot to digest. The slow dance. The slow dance. I'm going to, uh, seems like it's too easy, but I'm going to, I'm going to say hug. All right. Unless, wait, oh, yes. Oh, <laughs> Never mind, no, too, I was right. You second guess <laughs> yourself. You don't do that. Unless, that's what they call it. When they, You know when the wrestlers kind of grab, right? And they're, they're setting the yeah. bar on each other and they're moving around the ring. Maybe I, that could have been a slow dance. I don't know. All right. So, obviously, Ooh, that's on. kind of when you do that little la, la, la. The <laughs> straddle. Well, that's after the hug. So, yes. After the hug, see? Absolutely. So, makes that, sense. That, uh, to be fair, there are some things. Actually, no, I've probably done that to someone. <laughs> <laughs> we needed to do one more Irish whiskey before we played this game. And I, you know, I think you're <laughs> right. would have had the anecdote there. I, I can't have them talking so much. i got to make them drink some more. <laughs> Whoops, it is. <laughs> <laughs> the camel clutch. <laughs> Yeah, well, we, we, can, we can edit this part out if it runs too long. But this goes into another story about this. So as I mentioned, um, I think it's fun to wrestle Rob Rose because he's so much bigger than I am. Uh, taller, he's stronger, he's wider, he's just a bigger guy than me. Um, and we're, and him and I are great friends. Him and Christina, I love them. They're wonderful people. Um, so I'm very comfortable with them. And being the idiot that I am, not having grown up with a cell phone, I had a pager, thank you. Nice. Um, right? Uh, I was at Origins last year, and Clay did a bourbon and board games room. And so we went there, and Clay Ross of Capstone Games is a fantastic guy. I love him as well. Uh, so I was there. A whole bunch of people I knew were in the room. So like I was my usual, confident, fun self, being goofy. And I wasn't drinking at this point. But we were there goofing around, and Rob was there. So I pretend to wrestle with Rob, blah, blah, blah. And then Christina yells something, and I so Rob and I grab, and then I go back and I rip my shirt. I go well, not rip, but I pull my shirt all over my head. I'm like, Rah! and then both kind of stop and I kind of laugh about it. And then I look up, and about seven people have their phones out, taking pictures. And I was like, ooh, I should have seen this coming. That's because I, I don't think like that, right? And I was like, this is, <laughs> that is not a professional way to act. So, so uh, luckily, only one picture was posted online, but it was by a friend, by a guy I know, and he very nicely uh, removed it when I uh, said, yeah, that's, that's not a very good look for uh, Inside Up Games. What, you mean this one? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> you broke the internet. Well, no, so 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 <laughs> there, there's a funny fact there. Um, that was actually, that whiskey bourbon meetup was actually like my idea to do it with clay and it was no our way. show that did it with it no way i heard it that's hilarious i yep. was told it was capstone's bourbon and board oh game. it was totally his room and i'm like you know because because clay's a bud so it was yeah uh, yeah that's hysterical <laughs> that's actually where i met you the first time yeah that's hilarious so yeah you probably saw that whole thing happen oh yeah a look at my face of yeah. oh no yeah, they're, they're, I, I may have that picture in my possession, actually. Hey. <laughs> I wouldn't do that to you. Dan, 
You're going to have to skip that slide. <laughs> so, so don't, press, don't press this button. Is that what it is? Uh, okay. The, the blinking the red one, don't push that. Uh, that clearly so, contradicts our discussion. Okay. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's going against the brand, I know. But <laughs> anyhow, the camel clutch, I think you're avoiding the real issue here. Is the yeah. camel clutch a wrestling move or hug? I hope it's. A wrestling move, or yeah, it if, like a hug that might get you some prison time. Yeah, I think if that's a hug, I think the yoga pants are oh, a little yeah, too much. <laughs> <laughs> or it may have been someone's current president. Well, there's there there is that there is that. So so the from the back, and I believe this is our final one. Uh, that should be a hug. I mean, it might be it might be both. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna go with hug, even though hug? it could be both. Hug, and what hug. do we think? I think it's a hug. <laughs> <laughs> well played. A tip of the hat, sir. The the actual event we were just discussing. Yeah, it's like it and yeah. completely not planned. And for those of you playing along at home, there's my wife there in the little black shirt in the corner. So <laughs> that's so funny. So so there you go. Well done, sir. Is it a hug? That's a great game. Or is it a wrestling move? So That's fantastic. <laughs> well, we aim to please. We aim to please. Thanks for being a good sport and playing along. <laughs> no, anytime. That was fantastic. <laughs> so I think this has been a lot of fun. What do you say, sir? Uh, horrible. I haven't enjoyed any of it. No laughs. I mean, right. I've been faking it the whole time. Just Fake it till you make it. You know, that's what that's. That's what, that's what we keep saying. <laughs> Wait, you know Inside Up Games. Thanks for watching this week's episode. Join us next week when we play a game with the guest. If you enjoy our content, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Be sure to follow us on all forms of social media. Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook are the best ways possible. Simply find us by searching for Game All Night Show. And of course, check out our website at GameAllNightShow.com. This Week and Each Week is made possible through the generous support of donors like these. Be sure to subscribe below and check out our latest videos. I just ran downstairs and the family's there. Did you just hit your head on the chin-up bar? <laughs> yes, I did. Thank you, everybody. And it was we'll make sure we're recording. <laughs> <laughs> It was it was a worm killer because it was just the low fast coming in hot. I literally stopped it by sitting on it. <laughs>